What's up everybody, it's Angelina Love, seven time women's world champion, one half of the beautiful people, and you are listening to Toilet Side Talk. Have fun. The following podcast is brought to you by the Jonas Podcasting Network, found exclusively at wrestlingwithjonas.com. Brad Marcus, and welcome to another episode of Toilet Side Wrestling Talk. You're going to have to bear with me this week. I'm coming off a pretty nasty concussion, and I have some amnesia symptoms, which means sometimes I have trouble finding words, or I'll forget what I'm talking about in the middle of a conversation. So this should be really interesting today. My guest has worked for such promotions as New Wave Pro, New South, Zero One USA, Pinfall Wrestling Association, and has shared the ring with likes of Eric Dillinger, Victor Analog, Arthur McArthur, Ronald McDonald, Gary J, Jay Marston, and I could go on. So let's welcome today's guest, someone who I'm legit scared of, the true champion of the Midwest, Mad Dog Connolly. How's it going? Do you mind if I call you that? Uh, you can call it call me whatever you want. A lot oh, of people really? call me Mad Dog. Yeah, okay, yeah, cool. I, uh, okay. My my name's Austin. Um, okay. And and, and uh, I know Paradigm still uses Austin Conley. There's not a whole lot of p- places that still use like uh, Austin Conley or like Mad yeah, Dog yeah. Austin Conley. It's usually just been Mad Dog Conley, which is totally fine. I'm cool with whatever. Okay. Um, I but probably yeah, won't no, even name- address you by name, anyways. That's fine. You know, it's just the two of us talking. Right. Quick question. How often do you, do you shave your beard? Or uh, it, rather? Uh, every, every few months. Um, just kind of depends on how I'm feeling. Um, a, lot of the t- a lot of the time, I just kind of let it grow out. Um, and then but, does somebody say to you, hey, that looks gross or, you know. Well, there, well there's there's a lot of the time where uh, it's it's more of a – or just a, a nuisance rather than it mm-hmm. being kind of gross. Um, Cause like I get, it's so, it gets so long and the mustache goes like over my mouth and everything. And whenever I'm eating and stuff, like the food gets actually stuck in there. Yeah. And, yeah. and that, that becomes a problem. So I had, I, uh, for, for the public and, and the general worldly perception of myself, I, I have to, I have to trim it up. Sure. Sure. D- did, um, was it, how long would it take if you shaved down to the skin to grow back to what it is right now? Where it is right now? Uh, yeah. Maybe like two, three weeks. Oh, wow. Yeah. Did you come out of your long mom long. with a, a full head of hair, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, I, I, or a beard? I No, I don't. Well, I didn't come out with a beard. I, mm. I Maybe I came out with the hair. I'm not entirely sure. I, I don't think I did. Um, okay. But my dad was my dad was really hairy, and my grandpa, on my mom's side, was really hairy. Um, like my dad George was all... steel hairy. Yeah, 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 oh, yeah. Really? Wow. Um, and my my dad especially, um, he lost all of his hair on his head, and it just like grew everywhere else. Oh wow! Like a like a wild like 
wild garden. Mm-hmm. Your own garden. Oh my god. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, enough about your hair. Um, hon, no, I did have one more question about your hair. Does someone ever tell you though that I you know I think you should should shave or clean yourself up? Or is this all just you, you take care of that? Uh yeah, I mean I I've had partners in the past tell me that I should cut my hair. Mm-hmm. My mom tells me I should cut. Well, my whole family tells me I should cut my hair a lot. Um, Have they seen you wrestle? Yes, they've oh, all seen me. I wrestle. think that's a big part of uh, of Mad Dog Connolly. Right, right. Um. Okay. Thank you very much for coming on. I I didn't. I totally forgot to say that. And I think I forgot to tell you when we were talking before before we recorded. Sometimes also another thing that's been happening to me is that um, I'll be in a conversation and kind of forget what I'm talking about. Not always, just like this, since I got my concussion. So if I start, if it starts going in a weird way, just tell me and I can correct myself back again. I'm, I, yeah, I, don't no know, I don't know what's going to happen, but whatever. Um, have you ever had a concussion? I've had several. Several. Okay. So like, do you does it slow you down? Um, the last one I got did uh, it, it slowed me down for uh, a couple weeks. Mm-hmm. It 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 slowed me down. It recently my memory has gotten uh, worse than it usually is, oh, and wow. uh, it's not become like a big problem. But mm-hmm. uh, I noticed that I get very spacey a lot easier, and yeah. uh. There, there's like times where uh, somebody's either talking about something and and I forget or lose track of uh, what the conversation was about, like you said, and yeah, yeah. Uh, or I just uh, see it. Yeah, it, 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 totally it, goes, it, no. starts, it starts and it goes. It starts and it yeah, goes. Yeah, that's what I've been noticing. And I, uh, the only t- the only thing I can compare it to the like the forgetting what I'm talking about during a conversation is. If I've ever taken like ecstasy or MMA, MDMA, you know, when I was younger, that would happen. Right? I'd be talking to someone and forget what we were even talking about in the conversation. Um, oh, I yeah. don't feel I, all the other stuff with it. Okay. Good. So, a, are you, you've had multiple? Are you concerned? That's a big conversation. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, none of them have been like, obviously, none of them have been with with any type of like intention to get that concussion. Oh, sure. But it's, 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 it just kind of comes with uh, the nature of the business, mm-hmm. I, I guess. Is um, that a common thing, like a common injury concussions? Yeah, yeah. And I mean, that's that's why it became such a problem whenever uh, things like uh, Chris Benoit's situation and, and all of that started coming up, uh, yeah. Dynamite Kid and all that. Uh, Whenever it's CTE of, uh, professional football players like yeah, 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 you know what I mean. Like they say, they they say that uh, whenever athletes experience uh, more than like however many concussions, or like gradually getting more concussions, you know, it ter- mm-hmm. it turns your brain into uh, that of like a, a dementia patient. And that's the ironic thing. That's where I work. Like I, oh, really? I work at a, I, yeah, I work at a memory care residence. I do all the activities oh, wow. and, and well-being. So that's been that's been scaring me this past week too. Like, the, is, it, is this is this your first concussion? This is my first concussion. Yeah. Oh wow. Okay. Um. Yeah, I had a little accident uh, last week. I slipped and hit my head uh, on a desk. Um, not gotcha. at work, but it it was I I, I during last week, and I'd be forgetting stuff. I'm like, oh my god, this is what it's like. And then right. I decided that, like, I'm going to tell my wife that if I ever need to go into a memory care residence, just blow my head off. And uh, <laughs> A, I won't reanimate in case there's you know, a zombie thing. And B, right. I don't want to be there or make my family have to go there. For sure. I just went off on a tangent. I'm sorry. Is your, okay. does, you mentioned your mom um, and your dad. Do they have concern about concussions? Um. Yes. Uh do you see a doctor so, every time you get one, or do you kind of know what's going no. on? No. So it's a, it's I'm very stubborn. Um, mm-hmm. I'll I'll answer the question about my parents first. Sure. Uh, 
I so my mom gets super worried about me every time I do something stupid in wrestling. Um, I just had a no disqualification match against Jake Lander for Zero uh, One USA uh, a couple months ago, and uh, that was that was a really bad concussion because uh, there was a moment where the chairs started flying in the ring at the, all, all the fans in the building just started throwing the chairs in the ring at me. Uh, very very uh, Cactus Jack, Terry Funk, ECW type of stuff. For sure. And um, I didn't like whenever I, I started hearing all the chairs coming in, uh, I'm like thinking to myself, like, this is awesome. And then the chairs keep coming. And then in my brain, I'm going, Oh fuck. There's chairs coming directly for my head. And so uh, I was like trying to cover up yada, yada, yada. Uh, chair flew in directly at my forehead. You can kind of see the scar right up oh, there. Oh, God. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and, and busted me open the hard way. Oh, uh, my gosh. And uh, Did so, you know right then that something's wrong? Like this feels different yeah. then. Yeah, yeah, I because uh, I've bust, I've gotten myself busted open a few times before. That mm -hmm. as to why I've had so many concussions. Yeah, but, yeah, uh, yeah. This one was different because it was. Uh, I felt the blood pouring and like literally flowing, like pouring down onto the mat uh, while I was like turning over. And uh, when I got up, it just like like a faucet just dripping down my face. And I'm trying to like wipe it away and it still just keeps coming and coming. Yeah. And I, there was a moment while I was sit, standing in there that it was like, my vision was like all red except for the borders that were white. And that was like one of the scariest times. And that's when I knew something was totally wrong. And, uh, I got to the back, uh, and I almost passed out, but uh, I told my mom about that. Well, I told my mom about that. She told me she she's never seen the pictures or videos from it because I posted them all, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I uh, she never she never saw the pictures or videos or anything from it because she doesn't want to. She doesn't want to see any of that. Uh, she still gets really really scared about what I'm doing a lot of the time. Uh, but uh, I guess she trusts me. My dad, yeah, yeah. on the other hand. Whenever he, whenever I asked him if he saw it, uh, he told me he did, and he asked me how how it felt after I did get busted open and after I saw all the blood, um, and then he told me if I would have that would have been me, I would have just got pissed, and I what <laughs> that is that's just kind of a tell as to where where everything kind of comes from. Yeah, uh, okay, yeah, because yeah. <laughs> that because that didn't really slow me down any. That kind of uh. My instincts just kind of turned on and it just went right for it. When the fans are throwing the chairs into the ring, are they doing it like how, like, if there's a hat trick in hockey and just kind of tosses their hat on? Or were people, like, aiming for you? I don't know if they were aiming for me. Uh, mostly because I was underneath of them. Um, yeah, that's true. <laughs> but uh, it looks like – it looks a little of both – uh, some fans were were tossing them just in the ring. Uh, some of them were were tossing them directly at me. I even saw like when I watched the video back, I see the security guards and uh, uh, some of some of the like the ring crew even tossing them in, which was that's a whole other thing. But uh, there, uh, th yeah, it was. It, were you, um, were they supposed to be doing that? The ring crew. <laughs> Uh, I mean, if you don't want to talk no, about that, we don't, don't have. I don't think anybody was supposed to be doing it. Uh, oh, really? It was just yeah, a spontaneous yeah, yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, had you ever it, happened, had that happen before? Where ch fans just started throwing stuff in the ring like that? No. Yeah. No. Now, after the fact, have you gone back and, and like watched uh, the match and see where things turned? Yeah, and that's always kind of like sort of triggering for me because mm -hmm. I, I still vividly remember what it was like underneath all of those chairs. And it was, it was, it was really intense. Cause like you're like stuck underneath all of this steel and like, no matter 
how how much people want to say wrestling is fake or all that. Those chairs are all very real steel chairs that they just yeah. had in the venue. Um, but like, I I tried to shield myself in my head as best as I could, and like I feel them like clanging against the chair on top of me, and like just hearing it all and like feeling it all the vibrations on my hand and my hands already fucked up because I had uh, punched another chair before that. Oh, geez. Uh, geez. And, uh, were you out of yeah, the, for a while? No, I think I, re- I wrestled Gary J that match with the highlights he posted. Yeah, I think yeah. I, I wrestled that match the next week. Oh, really? Yeah. That's, wow. That's crazy. Yeah, okay. yeah it is. <laughs> And now, like, does he go easy? Like, does he go easier on you? You know, than he normally would, even though it doesn't look like you know it didn't look like it. But um, does he try and like not take make you know make you take headshots. A uh, little bit. Uh, I mean, I was trying to protect myself more so. Okay. Rather, uh, and still, really did nothing. You could see the cut open back up, and. Uh, we still ended up on the stage. <laughs> oh my god, that's crazy! All right, I w- we're going to get towards wrestling again. I just had a, a question: the four twenty in your Twitter and Instagram handles. Does that mean what I think it means? It well, it means a couple things. Okay. Uh, one, that that's my birthday. I'm bo- I was born on uh, April twentieth, nineteen ninety six. Um, so I'm a double Taurus. Uh, yeah, Sagittarius that. rising. Um. <laughs> And uh, I also love marijuana. Okay, okay. This yeah, I yeah. want to ask you. So do I. It's my favorite hobby. Where do, you, where do you live? I live in Springfield, Illinois. Oh, okay. So I'm in Champaign or Savoy, but okay. right next to Champaign. So we both have gotcha. the same. It's legal. Yeah, yeah. So how long have you been uh, smoking for? <sighs> if you can I, I have a long history with it. I smoked my first blunt when I was nine years old. Uh, and no, no, I thought I was high and I wanted to impress my friends. Right. So I, I acted, acted like I was high and, uh, was, was giggly all that. I ran into a wall because I thought that was what you did when you were high. Uh, (laughs) it was, it was very silly. So Um, that was, that's a pretty young age. How did you, were, did you, were you smoking with older kids? Uh, I had a babysitter that okay. uh, that had brought it over uh, oh. one, one night, and uh, he I, I was a very curious kid, uh-huh. very curious kid. Uh, a lot of the time to my detriment, okay. and uh, he brought it over. I think my mom told him that he could like smoke it in the basement if he wanted to, but like to keep it away from us. Yeah, and uh, I just kept bugging him about it until he let me hit it, and lo and behold. I uh, took a little break in middle school because I thought I was, I thought weed was dumb. I didn't want to smoke weed anymore. Yeah. Picked yeah, it back yeah. up in high school and then, and then officially like got full steam with it when I was in college. And uh, now it's more of an everyday thing. <laughs> you know, you remember the time where like you had to find someone who had some, you know, like, like yeah. that part, like the search for like, you know, your, if you, your dealer has it or it's dry on campus or whatever. Oh, man. Um, yeah. It's so weird now that it's as legal as going to pick up a six pack of beer, or, you know? Yeah. Do you, do you since you, you've uh, had this hobby for, for some quite some time now, as if I, do you get high anymore? Yeah, I do. Um, like you still I think get- it's it's different now. It's okay. different now. I think I, I think I'm so used to it. Mm-hmm. Um, I can definitely still tell the difference uh, lately because I I've been like cutting down just like a smidge. I don't. It's not like an all day thing anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, it's more so in the like evenings uh, after I do what I got to do during the day mm-hmm. and uh, but like. I, I definitely feel my brain slow down when 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 I'm when I'm stoned and yeah, yeah. Um, when when I'm when I'm sober I am a very hyper maniac of sorts and okay. uh, so sometimes it's a little harder to handle than others so but did your uh, parents like ever you know 
catch you in high? Yeah, yeah. And what, what uh, was, what's their re- what was their reaction? Well, my dad's a big stoner, so oh, he never. Okay. Really, oh. he, yeah, he never really. I think so. Me and my dad actually reconnected via weed because we both smoked. But so okay. that was that was that was cool. Um, my oh, mom has always hated weed. When I was growing up, uh, she she would always tell me that it's called dope for a reason, right? Uh-huh. And uh, so I uh, all through all throughout high school and stuff, I always hid it from her. Uh, yeah. College, I tried my best to hide it from her. Eventually, I had to like move back down for the summer and stuff. And uh, she she eventually caught me because I went on a tour with one of my bands to uh, somewhere on the East Coast. Came back with this huge jar. Oh, I'm sorry, it was down to Florida, but I came back with this huge jar of weed that I got from somebody in Bloomington, Indiana, uh-huh. and uh, it was just all all of this just shake. And uh, I had it in my room, and uh, I was smoking it in the bathroom uh, with the shower on, with the windows open, all the all the <laughs> shit. Had a fucking uh, little toilet paper thing with the with the dryer sheet on it, you know. Oh, totally. Um, and uh my mom still called me uh oh, really? yeah, yeah yeah i went through all this in here? fucking uh and and i think after that i got into it, i got into it with her and uh she she didn't tell me i had to do anything with it but uh my partner at the time told me that i had to flush it so i flushed it all down the drain i think i still had like whole quarter left it was oh, i was geez. so upset yeah yeah, yeah. yeah it must have been very but, sad it must have been like a funeral yeah but i i i live in my own apartment now uh nice. and uh, new sheriff yeah now. my my mom knows that i smoke she's very aware of it she's accepting of it she yeah. still doesn't like it but i i'm able to at least sit around her and enjoy like a hitter or two while she's does there she, does your mom drink alcohol she likes a glass of wine every now and then Okay, so but, but so there's there's nothing really she can say. Yeah, at this point. like yeah, no, um, exactly. Are there a lot of dispensaries in Springfield? How many do we have right now? We got two Maribus uh, uh, stores, and then I think we have two Ascends. I think there, I think there's four right now. Oh four wow! Did, yeah. you, uh, did you ever have a medical card? prior to no to no i wanted to apply for one but mm-hmm. i got a real overwhelmed with the paperwork and like a lot of the medical stuff like i have health insurance through the state uh-huh. but a lot of that medical stuff is like very like i get overwhelmed and i kind of just give up on it sure sure i'm telling you though like i i i get it it's so it's half the price it's crazy like how oh much wow cheaper it's it half? Is. Oh yeah, okay. I mean, I'll be just conservative, forty percent uh, less. It's unbelievable. So, so like something that I would get for fifty bucks is eighty. You know, uh, recreational medical would right. be fifty. So like, uh, you know, like the little disposable pens are like thirty dollars um, as opposed to like sixty. Anyways, okay. Where did you did you grow up in Springfield? Born and raised, yeah. Oh, really? Did were you? Did you know uh, Anakin Murphy when you were growing up? Uh, not when I was growing up. I met Anakin Murphy. Uh, he came through Springfield uh, to go to my my home fed PWA. Uh, okay. He would come. He would come to shows here, uh, and I start. I started back in late 2017. Mm-hmm. Um. So when I started, I saw him as a fan. And, oh, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And would like see him like post about like his backyard wrestling, and yeah. uh, we would we I I'd, I'd like talk to him every now and then. He would come to shows to see me. Uh-huh. Uh, I remember one of the first shows I wrestled was in Shelbyville, Illinois, for four zero one USA, okay. and him, uh, Robert Leach, and Jacques Kennedy uh, all came as fans to oh, wow. uh, co- to come see me in this little small town park hot as fuck <laughs> and 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 uh i think i think anakin was wearing uh one of my shirts if not at least all three of them but uh jeez oh, yeah yeah Does that feel uh, good it, it it's really cool uh cuz like 
I remember Anakin then, and uh, we we would ride together. Uh, we we trained uh, down in St. Louis uh, when when Michael Elgin was still relevant. Rest in uh, peace, fucking. Uh, he uh, we would go down there to train back in like middle of 2019 and um, early early to middle of 2019, and we would ride down there a lot together, and uh, we would. Uh, just like have so many like days that, and that's how we got close, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, so it's really cool to think about like how our friendships come from like then to when he was a fan to Mm -hmm. now we see each other almost every week. Did, um, so, but so he didn't grow up in Springfield, did he? No, he's from Jacksonville, Illinois. That's right. That's right. Um, did you um, have any siblings? I have uh, an older brother and a, and a younger brother. What's the um, the difference? Older my older brother is about uh, my older brother is about nine years older. Uh, okay. My little brother is actually uh, born a a year after me, but on the same day. So st- no also way. four twenty. Yeah. Oh wow! So your mom had a tough two years, you know, with <laughs> yeah. her body and everything. My- my, my mom has had a, a a rough life in general. Bless her heart. Did is uh, are are your parents still together? Uh, not technically. Do they live not together? Le- not legally. Yes, they do. Oh, okay, okay. Do but they so they're they're not like together, but they're living under the same. Oh, who knows? Okay. Yeah, not you got business. your own place now. Yeah, not my business. You got your own worries. Um, were you close with your older brother, or was that difficult because of the age difference? Uh, it was a little difficult. Um, I think he, uh, I think he saw me as a little kid, and like he was in high school and middle school a lot of the time. Uh, yeah. Whenever I, and like he graduated and then went to uh, the army and and basic training almost pretty much immediately. Uh-huh. And uh, so he w- he was gone, and uh, like he had a life, you know, he had a social yeah, life. Yeah. He was in high school, um, so I didn't really like get a super connected relationship with him when I was a kid. Um, we're we're I, I like to feel like we're a lot closer now. Like um, I watch his kids. I am there for family stuff that he puts on oh, okay. where we, we, we talk more now than we, when we did when I was a kid. Yeah. Which makes sense. Like what, I mean, what does a 18 year old and a nine year old really have in common? Yeah. Well, right. in your case, it would have been pot. Um, you know, since you started <laughs> <at that. laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't think he knew about that at that point. Though. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure. What was, uh, what was like the neighborhood you grew up in? Like, so I, I grew up on the north end of Springfield, and um, we they, it was always called we everybody on the north end of Springfield is called a newt, which stands for North End White Trash. Oh, uh, okay. yeah, um, That's so mean. It's I mean it's pretty true. I I, re- I remember my older brother had a keychain uh, that that said newt uh, for that, which is so funny. I wish I I wish I had it. Uh, it, do you consider it like offensive or do you think it's more funny? I think it's funny. I think it's funny okay. as fuck. Uh, <laughs> I, just because I agree. And like there are a lot of people from Springfield have a lot of problems with like there's there's bad neighborhoods wherever you go. Right. Sure, and I think that like no matter what part of town you're on, you're going to find somewhere that you're not going to like or that you're going to feel unsafe. In. Um. Sure. A lot of people say it's the east side of Springfield. A lot of people say it's the south side of Springfield. In my opinion, the north side is so unnecessarily violent and aggressive that, like, I I don't find most people on the north side pleasant at all. Really? And and uh, like we had some we had neighbors that that would try and and just start shit randomly uh, when I was a kid and. Uh, whole bunch of other stuff it was it was real rough and like if you if you were to like drive through my my neighborhood that i grew up in now my house that i grew up in is completely gone uh they put a new house on that lot and uh 
there's there's also there's so many other like real old and like worn down houses on that block now too uh-huh. and uh, there's baseball diamonds down the road that are like grow grass has grown over uh the playground that i used to play on when i was a kid is all rust it, it's it's pretty rough now do um, they just are they just letting it go yeah i think so i think oh, so man, that's kind of sad like did you have fun in your neighborhood when you were like a little kid uh yeah, I, I think so. Every now and then, we had a big yard, uh, big house, and uh, there was like it was an old house. It was about a hundred year old house. Oh wow! And um, I re- I remember uh, a lot of the time we would run around the the yard in the back uh, or like ride our bikes down the street and stuff. And I remember like when it would rain super hard, we had these really like deep ditches in the front yard that uh, we would like go swimming in. Uh, oh, because they filled up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And or uh, we had this big hill uh, near the front yard behind these hedges uh-huh. uh, when it would rain super hard that we would just like slide down and stuff. Oh. And cool. uh, and yeah, we I also had like a, a bunch winter. of animals grow. Huh? I imagine they're sledding on that same thing in the winter. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. When I when I was like small enough for that. Yeah, yeah. So not like not this past winter. Um, no. no. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Did uh, how would like your friends and family describe like a ten year old Austin? Uh, a ten year old Austin. Um. Like, were you, like, did you, were you outgoing or more I was shy? Pretty shy? I was pretty shy. I was pretty sensitive. I was also very aggressive, um, depending on the person. I was an asshole to my little brother. Uh, have you guys cleared the air since? For the most part, I think. Um, okay. I, I'm not entirely sure. But uh, I was definitely a bit of a dick. Uh-huh. Uh, Do you I, know why? Like after the fact, like, um, I don't know. I th- I think it's I think I think it's a matter of like not necessarily getting or at least feeling like I got a sense of a type of attention that like I fe- felt like I was like craving. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah. And so I was like trying to act out to like s- find it, I guess, in a way. Mm-hmm. Um. But yeah, um, I did a lot of sh- dumb shit when I was a kid. Uh, and any any run-ins with the law? No, thank God. Oh, Not, it, it didn't. It didn't really ever get that bad. Okay. I, I had I had some run-ins with like the principal's office, but that was like the extent of it. Okay, so would would the the Austin now would would Austin have now hung out with Austin of back then? Oh, but the ten-year-old Austin. Yeah, uh, yeah. I would hope that the Austin now would try to guide the ten-year-old Austin yeah, in a better true. direction. I think that, and especially especially in this last year, I think that uh, a really important realization for for myself is that uh, I am trying to like I, I want to be the person that I wish I had when I was a kid. You know what I mean? And what is that person? Uh, someone who is level-headed uh, and doesn't let their emotional reactions get the best of them, oh, right? Okay. Because we all we we all we all feel things that are very intense yeah. and are very uh, very aggressive in a way. Um, and, and I've been surrounded by violence and aggression and host- hostility my whole life, Prior and. To uh, prior to wrestling oh, wow. and uh, I I think that if I would have had uh, somebody to show me how to uh, take myself away from a situation without letting it uh, overwhelm me in a way, sure. I, th- I think that would have been really helpful. Did you have anyone growing up that you could like vent to that you trusted? Mm-hmm. Some people, um, but I don't, I think that 
I think those were mostly uh, like friends from school. And like when you when you get older and stuff, you start to realize that those friends just kind of come and go, which yeah, is fine. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, I never really I never really had any like other other than like my mom and stuff. Mm -hmm. I never really had any like super solid like r role models, I guess, in my life or like older figures in my life that I felt like I could talk to in that way. Mm -hmm. And I would still get like kind of scared to talk to my mom in that way. Did you, um, not to get uh, somber, did you ever, like, consider, like, a therapist or anything like that? Yeah, actually. Um, so, I, it's actually funny, because when I was in high school, I've, I've, I'm pretty public about this. Mm -hmm. um, I, I have a long history with self-harm. And uh, yeah, when, I when I was in uh, middle school, high school, even a little bit before that, I was, like, partaking in it and, like, doing things that were very unhealthy. Mm -hmm. And um, were you I, aware that they were unhealthy in the moment? Yeah, but I didn't care. Yeah, you know what okay. I mean. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, I would I and like I think this is it was all just sort of like that again seeking out that attention that I felt mm -hmm. that I felt like I wasn't getting but I was craving, and uh, I eventually my mom found out. And, uh, she, she flipped out and, uh, she, she would, uh, like offer to like, take me to, uh, like, <clears throat> like a facility somewhere to where I could get help. Mm -hmm. Um, not necessarily a therapist, but like an, an inpatient sort of thing. Yeah. I, I, um, I, I did an inpatient thing as well. Go on. Um, but I did, I didn't because it was kind of. In, in that moment, it was posed as more of like, uh, if you don't stop, you're going to go here. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah. When, when like, it, in my opinion, it should be seen as like, I really want to help you. I think this would benefit you. Yeah. And, uh, and I'm not saying that like my mom's wrong for doing that or anything. No, it's just no. kind of, it, it's, it's just that emotion of like, Oh, I see my my child doing this. How do I get him to stop? Mm -hmm. But uh, and she's scared. I'm sure you know what I mean. Yeah, like, and it's hard yeah. to like nothing prepares you to deal with that with your child, right? Um, but when I was 18 and I finally went to college, I uh, I started self harming again, and right. uh, I I had a friend suggest to me the uh, on campus counselors. Okay. Who uh, were free, completely free, because I had the uh, health insurance that the college had given me, um, and I I could see them weekly, and that was beautiful. We can't. I don't think I've seen a therapist weekly since. Oh wow! Um, and uh, would, would you see I, the same I, person? What? Would you see the same therapist regularly when you were in college? Yeah, yeah. When I when I was in college, it was like the first couple semesters that I would that I would see her, and it would be every week. We would just talk and talk, and like sometimes we would schedule out a couple of weeks, but like that was my first real therapist like experience. Yeah, and yeah. And it, it it really benefited me. I got on medication for the first time at, at eighteen, oh. and oh, nice. uh, that was that was my first uh, diagno diagnosis with. Uh, uh, they called it chronic depression or mm. chronic anxiety. It was chronic something, but it was depression and anxiety just generally. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, uh, and that was, that, that helped me out a lot. Um, and, and really like kind of set the stage for, for later on. Now you were saying um, you, you got, you started doing self harm again in college. Did others, you know, you're meeting on new people and everything. Was it something that you had to hide from them? Oh yeah, uh, is that like stressful? Like having it? Yeah, especially uh, when I would like be in class and stuff. I wore long sleeves a lot. I wore pants a lot. Um, I I would use my hair to cover things, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, but Jeez. yeah, what wasn't ever really a deterrent though. I don't know. I was a very I was a very silly kid. Very silly kid. How were you as a student? Um, 
my later years in high school, I, I, I was pretty good. Um, mm -hmm. my first two years of high school were garbage and I don't, I don't really know why I did. I don't, I think that's when like I started having a lot of, uh, like big depressive episodes that I didn't really like understand. Mm -hmm. Um, I, uh, but I had my first real relationship at 16 and, uh, I think that like set me on a real good path for a little bit um, because I was getting on a roll almost straight A's wow. for a little bit. And uh, I graduated from it would, when I was about 15, 16, I think I might've had a 2.9. I graduated with uh, like maybe a 3.4 or something. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I, it, it was, I did pretty good like ending up there and I would like, uh, assist for uh uh i did german all four years so i did taing for uh honors german courses uh oh, wow. honors physics all this stuff and uh then i went to college and like my first couple semesters were great mm -hmm. uh out of that first relationship mm -hmm. uh we broke up and i like the therapy was helping, the medication was helping, and then I stopped taking the medication, started smoking more weed, okay. and then everything started to like snowball. College got worse and worse. I moved off of campus, mm -hmm. started having less and less motivation to actually go to class, and uh, then, yeah, and then I just kind of does your family know this is happening while it's happening? Uh, yeah, I've, I've, I didn't tell them in the moment, but I definitely uh -huh. told them after the fact. Sure, sure, um, sure. But I ended up dropping out. Is that my third year? I think that was my third year. I don't okay. really remember how many credits I had left, but it was uh, it was my junior year that I that I dropped out of college. And what? Let me back up a second. When did oh, okay. when did you when did pro wrestling first come into the picture in your life? Uh. So I started watching wrestling around three or four years old. My older brother was really into it. My okay. a lot of my family, my a lot of my family is actually really into it. Um, my grandpa, on my mom's side was uh, my aunt uh, who lived with us when I was older. Uh, would always go to the shows in Chicago back in like the fifties and sixties, a little bit in the seventies too. Yeah, Windy City Wrestling, all that stuff. Um, and is your family interested in? Adopting a 46 year old man boy, <laughs> probably not. I'm okay. sorry, <laughs> okay, whatever, whatever. I'll I don't know. I don't, I don't think, I don't think, I don't think you would want it, but oh, uh, okay. But you still want to watch wrestling with great. Um, like, do you have memories of watching wrestling with your grandfather? No, my grandpa died before I was born. Oh, okay. And so then, uh, like, my, my mom, aunt. Would, my, my aunt, my. Me and my aunt, uh, when she got older and she was living with my mom, uh, would always have conversations about uh, like old Chicago wrestling and stuff. We would talk about the older guys because I would get because I was wrestling and I was getting more into the history of it. And we would always talk about like uh, Luthez or uh, George the Animal Steel and, and just stuff like that. Um, did did um did, when did you know that it was like I'm going to do that one day? Like was it was it early on when you were young or? Yeah. I was, I would say, I don't think I actually recognized it as like something I was going to do, mm -hmm. but I was doing, I was, I was, re I was backyard wrestling at like, uh, probably about seven or eight. I was going, I was going to indie shows around here, probably around the same age. Who and was your older brother? No, I had a friend that lived across the street. Uh, he, his name was Caleb and like, I would stay over, watch all, all the wrestling stuff. He got me into TNA at, at a super young age. Oh. Uh, uh, I learned about AJ Styles before anybody knew who AJ Styles was, right? Um, and uh, fucking, I like would watch pay per views and stuff, and like I had all the action figures. I had five different gimmicks when I was a backyard wrestler, and uh, when I, whenever I would stay over at his house and we would do all this stuff, wrestle on the trampoline and stuff. Uh -huh. uh, we would always go to uh, a show on Saturday night, and then the day after, he would make me go to church. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Were you so, religious up to that point? Uh, my family is. 
Okay. I, I've okay. never really been religious. Uh, it's yeah. more just been like a, a doing something to make somebody happy sort of thing. Yeah, I always tell my kids, we're not religious. I say, just be a good person. Treat people well. Yeah. Mind your own yeah. business. <laughs> like that kind of thing. Did, did, um, did, was wrestling like a, um, as for a career in your mind when you were in college at all? Had, had it gotten to no, that point No, actually, yes. Uh, so, well, I was, I was, I loved wrestling. My brother got me into it when I was a kid. Um, mm -hmm. because he always had like raw on whenever the attitude era was going on. Yeah. And so like one of my biggest memories is stone cold on the beer truck, uh, spraying down all the people yeah, in the ring. Yeah. Right? And, uh, mm -hmm. and so like fast forward through all these indie shows that I would go to all this trampoline backyard wrestling I would do, uh, I stopped watching it probably when I got into middle school around that time because I didn't really like it was it was that fake stuff and I was like not I I didn't think it was cool anymore basically yeah and uh, I uh, took some time off I started focusing on music uh, right. really and um, all throughout uh, high school and middle school I was learning how to play guitar and sing and, and uh, write music. And oh, so wow. about 15, 16, I started joining bands and uh, playing around here at a venue called the Black Sheep Cafe. Okay. And uh, I spent a lot of time, I would say up until 19 or 20 years old, uh, really trying to take that seriously. Not really mm -hmm. seriously, but like, trying to pursue that to some extent because sure. yeah. I don't think I ever saw that as like a money-making career. Mm -hmm. And, um, I went on tours, uh, all throughout the East coast and like some of the South, um, Are a little those bit. Good memories? Like, were those fun times? Yeah, those were, those were really fun times. Those were really stressful times because it was, mm -hmm. uh, five to six people all jammed in a trailblazer. Uh, for hours on end uh, to get to a basement show filled with maybe 30 people, maybe mm -hmm. uh, 30, 40 people uh, to play for 20 to 30 minutes. Maybe that. I don't know if our set was that long. Oh, really? Did you, did I, like, would you get paid for that? Yeah, yeah, we would get paid. And we, we had merch that we were selling and stuff, too, because that's how we got along. And the, the drummer of the band, Mario, he was like a math major. And so he would always like keep track of the expenses and stuff oh, and like wow. make sure that we were all good. Yeah. Uh, and um, so I did that for a while. And probably when I was about 19 or 20, sitting in, col sitting in my college townhouse uh, on my laptop, I come across, uh, I think it was Botchamania. I think it was either Botchamania or it was just some random Attitude Era video from the, the from the WWE YouTube, mm -hmm. and uh, from there it was just like I I got sent in a whole like uh, rabbit hole, you know, okay. and uh, that I always I always say that that Botchamania is what got me back into wrestling, and and I think that if it wasn't for those videos, I think mm -hmm. that I think I would have still got back into it. I don't know if I would have gotten back into it as much as I did, because that's what introduced me to kind of like indie wrestling and like different things other than WWE, you know, yeah, because they wouldn't yeah. show WWE. And uh, I uh, had you ever started, been to a WWE, like a house show or, a you know, a yeah. Bar? Yeah, I went back in like uh, I want to say it was either 2005 or 2006 mm -hmm. uh, when they came through Springfield. And I remember oh. making a sign uh, because I fucking hated Triple H, right? <laughs> and uh, I remember making a sign that said specifically, uh, "The game is over," <laughs> which is very funny because it's actually it's it's true. He is very yeah. over. Yeah, um, yeah. But I thought it was uh, a stab at him. Anyways, uh, 
but I would, I would, uh, oh, and then on the other side, I think it said like uh, Stone Cold or Awesome 316 or something like that. Uh -huh. When he wasn't even there, it was 2005, 2006. Oh, that's so funny. Totally. Yeah, hell no, he wouldn't fucking be there. But I was a kid and I didn't know any better. Yeah, yeah, totally. Um, Who took you? That was either my uncle or my mom. I don't think it was my dad. But it, it was one of those two. Uh -huh. I remember. I remember that for sure. And uh, I don't. I don't even remember like the house show at all. But I remember sitting uh, in the stands and, and just like the ring sitting in there uh, uh -huh. and everything and all the people and how small they looked from from yeah, those yeah. stands. Um, if WWE came through Springfield now, would you go to a show? I have before. I went one year a couple of years ago for for my birthday, because uh -huh. uh, because my partner at the time got me tickets, oh. and uh, it was it was fun. It was a fun time. It's I don't get to stand sit as a fan for for shows very yeah, very so often anymore. Ask you. Um, like, is it more like studying than enjoying a wrestling yeah? Match? Oh man, I it's it's very hard for me to like take myself out of it nowadays. Yeah, because it's all it's all just me like picking apart everything, mm -hmm. and uh, so there's there's sometimes there's sometimes where I can like sit back and like just enjoy something for what it is. Yeah, uh, but it's definitely a lot more difficult than it used to be. Okay, so you 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 dropped out of college. You were living off campus. Mm -hmm. When does the first seed of eh, maybe I'll uh, turn my hand to pro wrestling? When does when does that begin? So I moved back to Springfield. I, I was I went to college in Bloomington, Illinois, and I moved oh. back to Springfield in uh, 2016. I want to say it was okay. 2016. And uh, about somewhere near the end of the year, there is a dude that I'm working with that uh, tells me uh, because he knows I'm into wrestling, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm, How are I, you I was a big. At that time, how were you as far as physically, like in shape or not in shape? Like, did you exercise? Completely out of shape. I tried to exercise, never took it seriously, never like did anything with it. I've never, I never lifted a weight in my life. Oh, wow. um, yeah. Okay, go on, go uh, on. Um, and uh, but at the end of 2016, I had a goal that I told myself that I wanted to like get a membership at Planet Fitness and lose all this weight and stuff. Cause I was about 235 with no real muscle mass at all. Okay. And uh, I was told by my friend at the, at the print shop that I was working at mm -hmm. that uh, there was this school out in Auburn, Illinois, which is about 30 minutes South of Springfield. Okay. And uh, that's where my home fed PWA uh, where they were running their academy at the time, um, said that it was being run by this dude that he knows, uh, Danny Erdley, Spotlight Spencer Powers, who is a dude that I would watch as a kid at the indie shows. Oh, wow. And, and that uh, it wasn't true. Danny wasn't running it, but uh, mm -hmm. he, was, he was like one of the dudes that would wrestle for that company. Okay. And uh, uh, Guy Smith, uh, he was the actual head trainer. He's another guy that I used to watch and remembered vividly from when I was a kid. Oh, wow. Um, you tell them that? Yeah, no, I told them all that whenever I first started, they were so like, I, th I think they still get like taken, taken back by it a little bit because like that was so long ago. That was at yeah, least, yeah. that was almost, almost 20 years ago now. That's oh, wow. pretty, that's pretty oh, fucked up. Yeah. Anyways. Uh, and, uh, so I walk in my first day, uh, or I'm sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. I was told that I took most of 2017 to like put it on the back burner and like uh -huh. get in shape and all this stuff. I was going to go into the gym a little bit more, watching what I ate a little bit more. Um, and then me and my partner at the time, we broke up. I moved back to my mom's house and, uh, mm -hmm. I was just like sitting in my room thinking about it like man because i i had made a list and i still have it somewhere i think mm -hmm. of like pro wrestling schools 
all throughout the country because I didn't really like take PWA very seriously, which is uh-huh. very serious, very si- silly now that I'm where I'm sure. at now. Mm-hmm. Um, but I didn't take it very seriously. And so whenever I, uh, whenever I uh, was thinking about being a wrestler, like for real, I, I made this list of schools all around the country and then screen printing shops because that was like the real, real shoot career that I was working uh-huh. with um, uh, near those schools that okay. I could apply to. And um, I never followed through with any of those schools. That, that was all just some big dream. And then one day I'm just sitting in my, in my room and I'm like, man, if I'm going to do this, I just got to fucking do it. Uh-huh. And I, I messaged them. Uh, I don't remember when I messaged them, but I messaged them and saying that I was interested in coming down and, and trying it out. And they told me what time, how much and all this stuff. And so I did it. Is it expensive? One, I don't even remember how much I paid for that, for that, uh, for those first few months, to be honest. Uh-huh. I think, it, I think it was about 60 a month. If I'm pretty okay. sure, if I'm, if I'm correct, it wasn't too bad, but mm-hmm. I think there was a down payment that I'm forgetting about. Okay. Um, but, uh, I signed, I signed a contract, uh, stating that I will help set up for all their shows, tear down for all their shows. Uh, and we even set up tear, tore down for training. Oh, uh, really? Yeah, because that was the same ring they were using. Yeah, yeah. Um, Is that what they call like all like the 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 new like trainees have to do that yeah. kind of stuff? Okay. Yeah, there, there were there were about uh, two others other than other than myself. Got it. There was uh, IJ Sweet who still mm-hmm. still wrestles. Uh, and then Mayor Kincaid, who uh, is one of my best friends. Oh, cool. And uh, I uh, started, I think it was September 13th, 2017. I might be wrong on that day. Had but you ever it been was in like a real wrestling, like a real pro wrestling ring at that point? Yeah. So, so when I was a kid going to, to those indie shows, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, my, friend, my, friend, my friend who brought me, uh, his cousin was, was a manager for. Uh, New Midwest Wrestling was the company, okay. and uh, his cousin was uh, Philip H. Dempsey, Ph.D. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, one one show, I just re- I just remember I wanted to get in the ring super bad, so I had uh, Caleb ask his cousin, and we got in the ring, and it was the fucking craziest shit of my whole life. Oh, and uh, and now now that same ring is in the backyard of one of my trainees. And that oh, is really, yeah, that is the craziest fucking thing I've ever, I just thought, I just realized that. Wow. Yeah. Does one of my just, trainees. Does, does it stay set up like all the time? Oh, I have no idea about that. But, oh, okay. Uh, okay. It, his uh, uncle uh, took it and uh, set it up in, in, in their backyard. And I think that's, it's somewhere near here. I don't remember though. Yeah, you find out. I'll drive down in the middle of the night, obviously, and do it. Um, so, do do you have like when you when you get there and you like come for your first day of formal training? Do you have like a mentor or somebody that you can like get feedback from? Like, what do you mean? Like, you know, you're starting training, but like. How am I doing? Like, am I doing stuff incorrectly? Do you have somebody who's already, you know, is a professional wrestler says, no, you got to do this, do this. Oh, oh. tricks. You mean like after I graduated training? Yeah, yeah. um, No, more like through training, someone that you could ask questions to. Or is that your trainer? uh, That would be my, that would be Guy, that would be Guy Smith for sure. Uh, but there was everybody in that locker room that would that would try to take care of me. My first oh. match was against Casey Jackson, another uh-huh. dude that I watched wrestling whenever I was growing up. Uh, and uh, do you remember yeah, your first match that I wrestled? Uh-huh. Uh huh. Yeah, it was a gauntlet championship. Well, it wasn't a championship match. Uh, it was a gauntlet match against Casey Jackson uh, okay. for PWA back in. 
March, February of I was I think it was February of 2018. Okay. Um, I I was a henchman in, in another gauntlet uh, back in December of 2017. Okay. Um, but wasn't officially graduated or okay. whatever. I I officially graduated after four months because the academy closed down. But oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so then so you have to I never, go find somewhere else? I did after about a year of not. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I just kind of learned on the on the road. And mm -hmm. on, it was like on the job training. And uh, just kind of trying to like... I remember one of the first shows I ever did, Bob Holly was there. And he, he told me the biggest piece of advice that he could give me was to work on my character development. And so I didn't like necessarily put too much focus on my in-ring work mm -hmm. and uh, put a lot more focus on like who I was as a character. Back then I was Handsome Dan Lipbox, so I was just like this big fucking grease ball. And I was trying yeah. to like work on that and like trying to uh, find who I was as that character rather Did than you like, like that character. Uh, uh, like, would you depends. rather return to that character? Hmm. Maybe for the right price, but okay. it would definitely it have to be for the right price. That answers um, the question. Uh, years removed from it, um, mm -hmm. I, I had, I did have a lot of fun, a lot of the time. Um, but there was also a lot of the time where I just felt gross about myself. It was hard for me to get into that character. It was hard for me to to find who it was and who mm -hmm. I really wanted it to be because it was all in all just a rip off of like like a Rick Rude or uh -huh. like a Joey Ryan even you know it sure. was like uh, just something more rather who who I wanted to be as like a joke. You know, because it wasn't ever like a serious thing. Yeah, sure. Um, but how, how I, I don't. Your... Go on. Go on. on. I was going to say, how is your mental health at this point? Uh, not the best. That's for sure. Okay. I was running myself pretty. People know that, or I feel like they could tell. I don't mm -hmm. think that any. I don't remember anybody really saying anything about it though. Okay. Uh, but like I was in and out of therapy uh, when I first started going to uh, going to wrestling school. Or I'm sorry. No, 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 no. I'm sorry. I'm getting my times mixed up. Uh, but I was I was working a lot. I was training uh, in the gym a lot, and uh, I, I was in a really toxic relationship. Mm -hmm. So it was all just kind of wearing on me. And all, on top of all that, uh, like at the peak uh, of whatever Dan Liplock was, mm -hmm. I was driving down to St. Louis at least like at least once a week, every week, if not twice a week, if not maybe three times. Oh wow! You know, and uh, it was, that all of that, just everything together, it was it was a pretty pretty tough situation. But uh, was there ever a moment where things like exploded? Yeah, I'm not entirely sure if if exploded is a word for it, but it was okay. just it was just kind of like a, a a gradual like I don't know if I can fucking do this anymore, you know? Uh -huh. Like it, the the act was getting tired, I was getting tired of it, uh -huh. and uh, it was it was just finally time to put it to rest. So did you have something to, I mean, did you have something in place that you've been thinking about or just like, all right, I got, I want to retire this, you know, Dan lip lock and move on to something else. Did you have something else ready? Um, no, not necessarily ready. Uh, mm -hmm. I, so the last Dan lip lock match was at zero one. Right. Yeah, it was at zero one for uh, against Anakin Murphy uh, okay. in a toy box of fun match. Oh. Uh, 
and this this is like months removed from uh, not even a lot of months, like maybe a couple months removed from when the pandemic first hit. Okay. And uh, we are working in a very small uh, schoolhouse for for these tapings, mm -hmm. and um, after that, I was like, I was still training because the academy had come back to Springfield, mm -hmm. but uh, I I wasn't. Uh, I wasn't working any shows for oh. at least like a month or two. Okay. And I, and I took that time to really like figure out what I wanted to do. And I had, I had like an idea of like what this was before, you know, okay. um, yeah, I remember yeah. like the, the first year of lip lock, I, I told my mayor Kincaid uh, that I wanted to do something like more serious and like, uh, I don't remember what I compared it to, but I remember when I told him, he told he he told me that it sounded like I just wanted to do another Stone Cold gimmick like everybody else does. Uh -huh. And uh, so that kind of just got, that made me throw it to the wayside. And uh, Is that discouraging when you hear that? Yeah. I mean, like, of course it is, because mm -hmm. I don't want to be just another, like, cover band of Stone Cold. Yeah, I want to be who yeah, I am, yeah. but, like, still inspired by that. Because Stone Cold's one of my favorite wrestlers of all time. And uh, I put that aside for a few, for a couple of years, did the, did the lip lock thing. And uh, then finally called it quits in the middle of 2020. And uh, I remember I took a walk one day because I was working on the in ring stuff of how I wanted to be. Uh, but I didn't really know where the character was yet. And uh, so I took a walk one day in a park and like just sat on a bench, had my notebook in my hand, listed out a whole bunch of ideas, whole just brainstormed everything that I could and uh, tried to just like find what it was, where it was, and, and like why, why it is if that makes sense. No, know? that makes complete sense. Do you still have this notebook? Yeah, I think I still have the list, too. Oh, wow. Um, and, uh, yeah, and then I just kept thinking about, like, how I wanted to present it, how I wanted to introduce it, because I think that's super important, is that a lot of people just, like, kind of change just on a whim. But yeah, the fans yeah. can't, can't really connect with you if you're just changing on a whim. They're yeah. like, what the fuck is this now? You know what I mean? And who's he going to be it, next week? Yeah, and then they kind of lose, like, it's almost like the boy who cried wolf. Because, like, mm -hmm. you, you, can, you can say that you're this thing all day long, but unless you're actually, like, giving the fan, like, the, the story or the motive or, like, the, re the reasoning, that's kind of uh -huh. the motive, um, then, like, they can't connect with it. And so I, I've always prided myself in the fact that whenever I did all these changes, I gave it a story. Um, oh, okay. And like, and this wasn't even intentional. Before I ended Lip Lock, I did this series called Dan Lip Lock Tries Social Distancing, Distancing mm -hmm. where he got lost out in a forest, uh, went crazy, uh, started hallucinating that uh, he was actually his manager, Rob Leach. And then all of a sudden he wakes up and it's a dream and nothing actually happened or did it. Oh, and that, yeah. and that was basically the story. Right. And so months go on, months go on. I do this match with Anakin months go on. And then I go completely dark on socials. And then one day I just pop up, pop up with uh, this promo of me with my handsome Dan lip lock shirt on and, uh, saying uh, that uh, I've been playing this character for these last two years, yada, yada, yada. This isn't really me. I don't really like doing this. Uh, but everybody keeps telling me that if I don't do this, I'm just never going to work out all this shit. And yeah. then it just spiraled and spiraled and spiraled until I had this big, like, sort of, like, episode where uh, Mayor Kincaid, I keep bringing him up, um, he uh, comes up from behind me to try to come for me. And uh, I just start freaking out on him. I start swinging on him. And he puts me on a, in a chokehold, uh, chokes me out, shoot chokes me out and puts me back against the wall, leaves the room. 
and then you just see comments all across the wall and 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 the music that I thusly used hit. Yeah, yeah. And then and then that was that was the intro promo to who Mad Dog Conley was. But I wasn't calling him Mad Dog then. Okay. What was it was it just Austin Conley? Just Conley. Just straight just up. Just Conley. Conley. Yeah. And then when did when did uh, you uh, use Mad Dog? So uh, my trainer actually gave that to me, but I didn't want to call myself that. Uh-huh. I never like whenever like unless it's like like I call myself the true champion of the Midwest. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I have every right to do so. I carried three belts in New sure. Wave Pro, mm-hmm. and uh, I. Uh, don't think that calling yourself like, uh, say for example, hype beast, calling yourself a hype beast, like mm-hmm. that's, in my opinion, very. Uh, there, there's all there's all of that that there's all that presentation, but there's none of the meaning. If if you okay. can't give it give it that meaning, sure, sure. And, uh, so I didn't want to just come out of the gate with the name. Um, I, I was sitting on it the whole time, but okay. um, I tried to figure out my wrestling style to a uh, tribute to that name. Yeah. You know what I mean? To, to present myself mm-hmm. as that mad dog. Um, and then I got onto paradigm pro doing all mm-hmm. the UWFI fights and stuff. And the commentators just one, one day just like called me, uh, said that I, I, I wrestle like a rabid dog or fight like a rabid dog or something like that. And so I took that. Uh-huh. And I flipped it around in a promo against uh, Hardway Heater. I want to say it was okay. And uh, said, it, it, "If if they want a rabid dog, will uh, or if they want something, or rather, uh, I th- then I ended up by calling myself a mad dog, a mad okay. fucking dog. And uh-huh. and from there, from there, it was just boom." That's but I, mad dog. Yeah, but I, I, I always knew that's where it was going, but uh-huh. I, had to, I had to get there first. Yeah, for sure, for sure, as opposed to just showing it right up front. Yeah, did, yeah. Is it, um, is it stressful having to, like, promote yourself on social media? Very, very stressful. I hate social media. I wish that, yeah. that I've gone through so many, uh, so many episodes of like deleting my personal socials and reactivating them, especially these last few months um, Mm -hmm. because I've been getting overwhelmed. Uh, But yeah, no, if I, if I didn't have to do like the music or the the wrestling and stuff like that, I chances are I probably wouldn't be on social media. Is there like, um, like if you ever decide like, God, I, I need to take like a month or two off. Can you do that, or do you risk like missing an opportunity? I don't know about missing an opportunity, just because there's still all these direct ways to contact me. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. Uh, I think in my head, just because of the way that my brain's wired, I feel like I would be constantly reminding myself that, like, if I don't do this or if I don't post this, then like. There's that missed opportunity. There, well, yeah, I guess there's that missed opportunity of yeah. like uh, of showing myself, and if they don't see me, they can't think about me and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, when was the last time you went on a vacation that you didn't bring wrestling gear? That I didn't bring wrestling gear. Uh-huh. I went to New York sometime last summer to. Uh, visit a friend and oh. uh i didn't bring wrestling gear still thought about wrestling but i didn't know about wrestling gear out there yeah. uh, um, d- does, um do you so you you tr- you you train um pro wrestlers now correct yes yes i do is that oh two questions about that is it is that full time uh not necessarily. Yeah, like uh, I, I train. I train uh, at least two days a week. Okay. Okay. Do you consider yourself a veteran? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I. I'm. I'm only about five. Five and a half years in. Yeah. Um, that's what I thought. It, but I was like, oh, he trains people. Like that's right. Impressive. Right. Um. It's a. It's a. It's a wild situation because uh, my trainer uh, was getting very burnt out. He had been in it since like 2000. 
right? Okay. And so, and he never really got that big break. And so he, he, he was getting really burnt out. He had lost his, his, his motivation and his passion, especially for training mm-hmm. and uh, decided to step away. And uh, nobody really wanted to step up to help people, uh, but, but me. And like, it's actually pretty funny. Cause like, I've always wanted to be a teacher. I went to school, I went to school for psychology uh, in hopes of becoming a professor uh-huh. um, or at least a teacher, you know, sure. um, I, and like I was a TA in high school and all that. Uh, and so to actually get this like teaching role, you know what I mean? But for something that I, that I still am feeling all this passion for, you know, it's, it, that feels cool. Yeah. That sounds awesome. Okay. I have one last wrestling question for you. Okay. So in the wrestling universe, there's X number of moves that you can do. Is it, do you spend time trying to think up something that you've never seen before? Like as far to, to, you know, to put, put in your repertoire. Like, do I try to think of something um, that, like, yeah, that you haven't seen on TV or, you know, or in matches at shows you've gone to? It depends. In my opinion, I don't think that anything is original anymore. Mm-hmm. It's really hard to find something original. Yeah. Uh, the world has been going for years and years now. People have been doing this for years and years mm-hmm. now. And, and at some point, somebody has probably done the thing that you think that you created. And uh, so I, I try to put my personal touch on, on everything. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think I go into anything with the mindset of like, oh, what I'm going to try to do here is completely original. And mm-hmm. like nobody else has ever seen this before. Mm-hmm. Um, but like I definitely try to do something that like in this area, people probably aren't seeing a lot of. Okay. Okay. Yeah, and yeah, is, yeah. It, is it like how you present like a move? Is that what that makes it yours? Yeah. Or either how you present it or, uh, or even how you do it, uh, mm-hmm. how you execute it. Uh, okay. like, uh, I, and this is just me. Um, when, when I hit, when I hit my gut wrench suplexes, I throw them, I sit Mm -hmm. back up because typically I know that camera is going to be right there in front of me. Right. Yeah, sure. And, and I always want to get that good shot of, of my face and, and my reaction to what I had just done. And so where a camera is, I have all, yeah, as a professional wrestler, I feel like you should be. Okay. And, and uh, especially if your goal is to be on TV, then you've Mm got to know where those cameras are and you've got to be able to work them. And, uh, I think that like even just that little like sit out with the gut wrench, like that is something that makes it mine. Um, Even, even if it's like not just the me carrying him around, because I'm sure you can see that wherever, you know, like Mm -hmm. Alex Coughlin, he he's real big and strong, does the same gut wrench, carries him around. Kevin Koo, I know does Mm -hmm. the the carrying him around. Um, But like, it's, it's just always about the small things. Okay, last qu- last formal question here. It's an overall thing. Are you happy okay. right now? Where where you're at? My question was: Are you happy where you are in life right now? I I am very grateful for okay. for where I am right now. Um, in this in this moment, I I feel okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's nothing to complain about. Okay. Um, I have a lot of love from my family and my friends. Mm -hmm. Um, I survived a very, very bad car accident back in like March. Um, And that sent me into a big depressive spiral for Uh a while. And uh, I, that gave me a lot of time to think about my perspective on life and things. Mm-hmm. And uh, I just, I just had a family member, fam, blah, 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 family member uh, pass uh, a couple weeks ago who I was pretty close to. And uh, that, that also put things into perspective as well. 
And mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I think I'm happy. Mm -hmm. I, I think I'm happy with where I am. Okay. Um, I, I know that things could always be better. Yeah, and, yeah, and, yeah of and, course, for sure. Yeah, and and I'm always striving to like make those things better. And mm -hmm. uh, but but overall, if I were to say anything, I'd say that I'm very grateful for who who I have in my life, mm -hmm. what I have in my life, and for the fact that I s still have my life. Yeah. Well, that's a that's a good answer. Um, all right. Can I ask you five non wrestling related questions? And I promise I'll let you go. Shoot. They're just yes or no's. Um, can you eat farmer's cheese without getting sick to your stomach? Describe farmer's cheese. Okay. So one morning I went over to my in-laws for breakfast. My father-in-law is making something, which I later found out was cottage cheese and cream cheese mixed together. I see him make two plates. He puts one down for the cat and then one in front of his himself to eat. Would you ever eat that? No. Okay. I would not. He's, he's I would all, only only strictly because I do not like cottage cheese. I agree. Perfect answer. Um, do you wrestle on the Jewish Sabbath on Friday nights? He, yes. Okay. Is that is that the is every Friday the Jewish Sabbath? Yeah, Shabbat. Okay. 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 Yeah. All right. Now this is a big one. For two hundred and fifty million dollars. Would you give up using a toilet and get walked three times a day, like you know, with a leash, for two hundred fifty million dollars? And you could probably like buy like a nice leash and uh, someone who walk you. <laughs> uh, fuck. Um. Two. You can't. I'm, gonna have, to, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna have to go. No, I think with no. the world nowadays, uh, I would have to need yeah. uh, at least a billion. Okay, how about this? Two hundred fifty million, but after five years, you can tell everyone why you why you're doing it because I got paid two hundred fifty million dollars. I'm still I'm still going with that billion. I'm still fair, going with that billion. Fair enough. Okay, have you ever stayed in a hotel? Where, like, on their front marquee, they advertise color TV? Yes. Yes, I have. All right. And then finally, when you have guests over to your home, do you hold up a mirror before they walk in to make sure they're not a vampire? No, but I actually have a funny story. I had an irrational fear of vampires when I was a kid. Because of uh, the cartoon Johnny Bravo, I don't know if you yeah, remember totally. that. Yeah, But the, but there but there was an episode where he went on a blind date with a vampire, and I just remember at the end of the episode, after he had the date with the vampire, uh, he looked in the mirror and he couldn't see his reflection anymore because she turned him into a vampire, right? And uh, so I had a nightmare that night okay. that uh, when I was with my aunt and my cousin. Uh, we had gone to it in my in my dream. I had never been to Chicago, but yeah. going to Chicago later in my life, I, I realized that it was probably something similar to that. But anyways, in the dream, say I'm in Chicago, some big metropolitan area, and uh, we go up to this big tower. At the top of the tower, there's a loft area where this big. I remember it vivid, vividly. <laughs> there's, a, there's this big loft area with uh, this vampire lady just waiting uh, with a bed. And uh, she'd like take my aunt and my cousin uh, separately, individually, and and just like turn them into vampires. And then like she'd be waiting for me. And like that was such a traumatic nightmare for me to turn into a vampire. That yeah, for yeah. years, years after that, I think I might have been like eight years old, maybe. Uh -huh. And uh, for years after that, I was terrified, terrified. I hated vampires. But now you're comfortable with the idea of vampires. Yeah, I think so. I think All so. Right, good. Well, you were five for five. You did tremendous. Um, Mad Dog slash Austin, thank you so much for coming on and answering my questions uh, and more. Um, I really appreciate it. Um, are you going to be, are you wrestling uh, soon? I know what, July 2nd? Uh, uh, New Wave for, for New Wave, yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, this Wednesday. Uh, on IWTV, Paradigm Pro is having their big season finale of UWFI Contenders. 
uh, with me and Alex Kane for the Heavy Hitters Championship. Oh, wow. That's Wednesday at 9 p.m. Central, so 10 p.m. Uh, Eastern. I think that's three hours back. I think that's 6 p.m. E- uh, uh, Pacific Standard. And then uh, this Saturday, I am wrestling for Zero One USA in Mattoon, Illinois. Where's Where's Mattoon in relation to Champagne? Pretty close. I, it's near. It's more. It's closer to Effingham. Um, okay, under an hour. I, yeah, I would say so. I think it is. I gotta go see shows there. Hmm? I I need to go start going seeing shows there um, because I moved down here like two years ago and just started going out again. You know, in the last couple gotcha. of months, so I've been looking for uh, uh, promotions uh, that are near where I live now because you know I used to live up uh, by Chicago, so there'd be tons of shows. But gotcha. I, whatever. I just posted on on my socials uh, my my schedule for the week, including the the paradigm. Uh, oh, okay, so uh, it's all in, in the area. Yeah. yeah. Oh, cool. Okay, I'm gonna go check that out. Um, all right. I wish you nothing but health and happiness and good luck going forward, and um, hopefully we can do this again sometime. Yeah, for sure. Thank you so much, Brad. All right, Austin. You take care. Yep. Yeah, you too. All right. Bye. Bye.